Hi, and welcome to another season of Kitchen Inspired. Um, I'm Jen Morris, your host, and I am here today with Dunstan Smith of Nourish Proper Food Truck. And Dunstan, we are super excited to have you on the show. Uh, let's talk about what we're cooking today. All right. So today we're going to start by making paneer cheese for uh, a sog paneer dish. Um, we'll start with that and then we're going to press it and let it refrigerate and harden so we can cut it later to make cubes to go into the sog paneer. Paneer being the cheese and sog just referring to any leafy green that you might have um, that's in season. Uh, we'll start with that. We'll get the cheese going. We'll build some roti and then we'll move into building a little salad to go with that at the end. That sounds delicious. Excellent. So, okay. Oh, to start, we're going to turn the heat on high here and let this come out. And what we're looking for is the milk to be about 180 degrees, not quite boiling, just, just before boiling. Um, and this I picked up this morning from Claire at c 2 it Farm in Plymouth. So we're using raw cow's milk. Um, you can use goat's milk. You can use pasteurized milk. I've had mixed results using pasteurized. Uh, I find the raw milk definitely gives you uh, a better curd. Um, and to, to separate the curd from the whey, which is how you make paneer, uh, we're going to be using both uh, a full fat yogurt as well as a little bit of vinegar and you'll see that when we stir this into there the curd will separate from the whey. We're going to strain it um, into this Lexan and then we're going to bundle up the curd and we're going to press it. So that's the procedure for this. Um, it's very easy. A lot of people I think maybe uh, have an impression that cheese making is more difficult and complex uh, than it is, and it certainly can get very uh, complex, but what we're doing here is very straightforward, and um, this technique will give you different varieties of cheese to your basic farmer's cheese. Um, it's also the start of uh, feta, um, so if you learn to make this, then you can graduate into making other cheeses as well. When you pull the curd, the paneer, once it's set, as you pull it out of the fridge, it's going to be firm and not very appetizing and not very flavorful. The cheese is really um, a building block that will suck up the flavor of whatever you put it in. Very nice. So you got this milk from c to it Farm. c to it We had a little field trip there recently. So we've come to the farm. Dunstan, what are we doing today? We're going to have Claire show you how to milk cows. Okay. This is Claire. Um, Claire and her husband Chris uh, own C2It Farm, and it's a local dairy in Plymouth. They have cows and goat, and we're going to teach Jen how to milk some cows. All right, so we've gotten started, Jen. It is your turn to come and milk a cow. Okay. And it's very nice. They're very warm. Hi, They're very fuzzy. Okay. So if you sit right there, okay. and the closer you are to her, the more comfortable she is. Okay. So don't feel nervous about it. So, okay. you want to just reach right down there and feel that. Yep. Oh, my God, she's a natural. You're hired. So you, did, you did a great job, Jen, but um, we don't have all day. What did you think, Jen? That was so fun, but my hands hurt a little bit. It's a little different than pulling a gallon off the grocery shelf. I know, I know. Isn't it so cool that we have so many local opportunities for milk? And so many things you can do with milk. If you're buying them locally like this, the flavor and the, the cream content is always fresh and high. Do different makes, kinds of cheeses. Yeah, it makes the best butter. Oh yeah, you can clarify the butter and make ghee. Or ice cream. Or just ladle off the heavy cream. And drink, and drink it in a milkshake. Ooh, milkshakes. Manchego cheese. Cheddar cheese. Feta. Mozzarella. Love it. Goat's or, milk cheese. Or camembert. Or a good blue cheese. Ooh. Or uh, telagio. Now we're getting really specific. 
the milk is up to temperature. It's just <laughs> starting to smile at us here. So, Jen, I'm going to have you put maybe about a half of that amount of yogurt into that pot. Okay, awesome. And you'll use maybe this spoon, might be the easiest okay. way to get it in there. Thank you. And then we're going to start stirring it. Okay. Maybe just a tiny bit more. And you can pour that liquid that's in there too. Let me throw that in there. Great. I like having a job. <laughs> and we're going to turn the heat down a little bit so it doesn't boil over. Okay. All right. It's and nice keep, and foamy on the top. Yep. Keep stirring that. Okay. Um. And what we're going to see is the whey, which is the, essentially milk water, it's going to separate um, from the curd. And the curd is the milk fat. Very good. This looks good. All right, so now we're just going to throw in a little bit of vinegar. Can you use lemon juice instead of vinegar? You can. Okay, so it's basically any acid or? Um, lemon juice and vinegar, I mean, once you start using other kinds of vinegar, like apple cider or red wine vinegar, you're going to be imparting flavor into there that right. is not going to be any neutral any longer. So this is white This vinegar. is just white vinegar, right. Okay. So you can see the curd now is starting to separate, and we're probably just going to put a little bit more vinegar in there. And how long should people expect this entire process takes? The From start to finish? Yes. Um, well, once you bring your milk up, that's probably oh, yeah, look at it. 10 or 12 minutes, depending on the speed of your burner. And then straining uh, and pressing is a very quick process. The longest part of the cheese making process will be uh, letting it cool and set in the fridge. All right, so that's done. Um, so we're going to strain that through here. And when you say we, we you up, mean? At, uh, up at the farm, D Acres, yeah. um, where I live, uh, currently we have no pigs. So traditionally this would have been pig food, but right now the pigs are all in the freezer. So we pour that into here. the pot. Okay, so this is just cheesecloth you can get at the grocery store or the hardware store. Yes, it is. And these are going to be our vessels for pressing. So at home, what you want to do is, now if you don't use yogurt and only use vinegar and lemon juice, uh, you're going to want to give this a little rinse. You're just going to want to run it under cold water. Since we use yogurt, it's not going to be too tart, um, but it's very, if you took this to the sink, you could just run some water over it, and that's just going to take off some of the, the bitterness um, from the vinegar and the lemon juice. Here, we're, we're no, we don't need to do that. We're just going to press. It's going to be good. So how long will this sit in, in the, the fridge? fridge? Mm, I mean, overnight is ideal. You okay. would make this the day before, but you can have it ready in a few hours if you're attentive and um, your fridge is maybe running close to 32 degrees instead of 42. All right, so the liquid, most of the liquid is off. We're going to take that, we put it in our plate, and just kind of move this to the side here so we don't get a big hole in the middle of the cheese. And then that's that. And then that goes into the fridge with a can on top. Uh, if any kind of canned good will do. You're just looking for a little bit of weight on there to keep uh, the liquid coming out of the cheese. And that's that. Um, Jen, are you ready to get your hands dirty? Yes, I am. Okay, well. What are we making? We're gonna make uh, paratha. Uh, and paratha is uh, Indian flatbread that's stuffed. Um, so we are going to stuff it today with a traditional spiced potato um, mix. And this would just be aloo paratha, aloo being potato. Okay. So we'll start Sounds by delicious. making the dough and okay. let it, then letting it rest. So whole wheat flour, mm, about that much. And again, the recipe is at 
kitchen-inspired.com if you want to look up the recipe and make this on your own. That was salt. This is ajuan seed. Mmm, that smells delicious. Yes, yeah, very floral. All right, and you're gonna start mixing. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. And it's, in India, they do it all by feel. I never saw anyone use a measuring device of any sort when I was there. So uh, what we're looking for is a certain texture um, at the end of this process, once you get it all balled up. Okay. Seems pretty easy. It's coming together easily. Am I doing this right? Yeah, you're doing great. Okay. Now I'm just gonna give a little poke, see what it feels like. Whoops. Yeah, all right. We're just gonna do a tad more water and then work it for another minute or so and it'll be ready. We'll let that rest and build the potato filling. So are you kneading it or just, like um, how do you want me to? Yeah, it? like a, a nice squeeze and push. <laughs> you're a natural, you're really making it come together there so I didn't want to involve myself too much. <laughs> no, I like to be put to work, this is fun. Give it a little push here, see where we're at. It's a little wet. Oh yeah, a little tad wet. All right, so we just do a little more flour. The beauty of flatbread making versus traditional sourdough or bread making uh, is that you can kind of add flour and water back and forth. Um, if you're making sourdough, it doesn't always like to have that back and forth between flour and water. Sometimes it'll start to reject and become very hard to work with. But since there's so few ingredients in here, it's, it's in such a small quantity, you can kind of get away with going back and forth. All right. How's that? Looks good. Let's awesome. move that to the side. All right. All right, so on to the stuffing of the paratha. So here, in general, I'll just have you chop those roughly any way okay. you want. We have um, the potatoes here have been cooked uh, and peeled. And to build the stuffing, we're going to spice these. Surprise. Wow. <laughs> I almost lost an arm there. <laughs> Good thing my hair's up. <laughs> Is that small enough or? Yeah, that's perfect. Okay. Um, and I will start toasting off the spices. We have ghee here, which is just clarified butter. Um, it's got a higher burning point or smoking point versus other butter that still has the milk solid in it. So here the milk solid has been removed, allowing us to cook it at a higher temperature before it starts to smoke and burn and taste acrid. Um, so, in this little cup, we have mustard seed, turmeric, amchur powder, which is dried mango, unripe dried mango, so it's tart. Um, a little bit of sweetness, but it adds a very unique flavor to this filling. We've got Kashmiri chili powder, cumin seed. Um, yeah, that's about it. We'll throw it in the pan here and start toasting it off. So you make your own ghee. Make people, my own ghee, yes. People can find ghee if they don't make their own. Did you say this already in the grocery store? I didn't, but okay. that's a good, good pointer. Yeah, if you want to make your own ghee, there's plenty of videos on the internet that will instruct you. It's very easy, but it does require uh, some close attention yeah. <laughs> because your ghee can turn to bernoisette or brown butter uh, very quickly. Ooh, and then bernoisette. from bernoisette to uh, black butter uh, quite quickly as well. So you just want to make sure that you're going to keep an eye on your ghee when you're making it. It's not something you can really walk away from. So we will take the potatoes. Oh, and we will put them in here in the pan. Okay. And then we'll use the fork. Oops to kind of mash it up a little bit. Okay. And here I have a little bit of ginger paste. It's just ginger that's been pureed. Um, and we're gonna throw that in there as well. Maybe about a tablespoon or so. Okay, so you, like you grate the this, ginger. And uh, we will be grating some ginger later. Um, Do we have a spoon? Here. 
but this is actually pureed in a food processor. So in India, okay. they, they use uh, ginger paste and garlic paste. Uh, and that's uh, a result of pureeing. Uh, traditionally, it would have been done with a mortar and pestle. But uh, nowadays, we use food processors. All right, how's that looking? It looks pretty amazing. We're gonna put a little bit of water in there just to kind of create a little steam, make it a little easier to break up. I'm All right. I'm gonna so jump on this? there for a minute here. Okay. Get that working. Leave it to the pro. <laughs> it smells delicious. It's, it's like right. magic. So that's that. That's our filling, and we're gonna let that cool. Okay. And start rolling out some dough. Okay, so let's make that paratha. So, here's our dough. It's rested about 10 minutes or so. And we're going to form balls, and then we're going to stuff it with the potato filling. We're gonna roll it out, and then we're gonna pan fry it. Okay, is this my job? This, yeah, well, definitely is gonna be your job. So let's cut that into four equal portions. Okay. All right, and then we're gonna try to make balls out of them. It's gonna blow up again. Oh, not that bad. <laughs> Look out. Ooh, Inspire kinda. Cafe goes up in flames. <laughs> and I will assist you here. This is okay. very, very nice balls. Okay, so we have our, our potato filling right here. Okay. And a spoon to get it into the ball. So. Take one ball, mm -hmm. create a little, you can go ahead and join me. Make a little well. Okay. And then bring the sides up. Is mine too big? No, it's great. You know, this okay. is, this isn't uh, um, the most precise. Exa exact, <laughs> precise, uh, Bread, that? you don't have to worry about that too much, that's great. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll just put a little bit of filling in there, and a little bit of filling. Oh, it smells so good. In there. Do you make this in the food truck sometimes? Um, I haven't, but I will be serving it this year. Um, roti, paratha, and then there's another bread called puri, which is a flat fry bread. So mm -hmm. that's a taco. We're going to be looking for a slightly different uh, product. We want to bring, make sure the flour comes up over top of the potato. We're just okay. going to put it in there like that. And we want to make sure that we seal it. Mm. So, Kind of like an empanada? Just like an empanada, right. It's so fun to see how different cultures have sort of very similar versions um, of different food products, like everyone has a stuffed bread or mm -hmm. some sort of a flat bread, um, given their environment, their climate, they have different ways of doing it, but very similar. So can you stuff this with anything else? Yeah, you can stuff it with cheese, you could stuff it with um, any number of vegetables. The primary thing being, so we're gonna kinda oh. take that rim, push it back down. Okay, and then get rid of the brontosaurus look. It's nice. <laughs> but for rolling, we kinda want that shape like this. Oh, wait a minute, I missed what you did. Just kinda. Just roll it now? Yeah, pretty, what you're just gonna do is kinda bring the sides in a little bit like this right here. Right? Okay. And then sort of using your hands, you can kind of manipulate it back into it like a hockey puck. Mm, okay. And then you turn it over, you roll the top. Okay. So, let's see here, what do we have for heat there? Okay, that's good. Would you mind throwing a dollop sure. of butter in there? Is that good? More. Okay. A little bit more, maybe that amount again. Excellent. Okay, I'll roll one first okay. to show you, and then you can you can do the I'll next one. Pay attention. One. All right. Okay. So we're going to be pretty gentle. Our filling was a little bit warm, and we want to sort of prevent the filling from coming out of the bread itself. So okay. we're just going to go nice and easy with it. Light touch. Uh, yeah, a light touch. And sort of letting the rolling pin do the work, and then turning it as necessary. 
So does it get, it basically gets worked into the dough? It does a little so bit, then. right. It's not necessarily like a calzone, mm -hmm. which the filling is completely separate from the paste or the dough. This is more, um, becomes, they sort of, right now they look very much like they're coming together, but when we cook them, it will separate a little bit. Okay. All right, so it looks it's like our, our butter is smoking. I'm not gonna hit you with melted <laughs> butter, or burning butter, I promise. All right, and we'll just kind of let that sit there while you roll this one. Okay. And I'll switch sides with you so I can protect you from any flying fat. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is done. So this is roti, roti number one is done. We're just gonna remove this, sorry, parata number one <laughs> is done. I did it again. And we're gonna put the next one in. Looks like there's still enough butter in that pan. All right. Okay, so now we are making sog paneer, and that is um, paneer made with, uh, a paneer dish made with spinach. Yes. And where are we getting spinach this time of year, Dunstan? We're getting it from Longview Farm. Um, you can head over there and meet our friends. fall time and it, it sprouted up in the fall and we were actually able to harvest off of it uh, I think in November um, do a couple of harvests and then it basically just we use this row cover to add a little extra protection and it basically just hangs out lays dormant through December January when we want to take a break and <laughs> It's a little harder to get into the greenhouses that time of year. Anyway, um, and then once the daylight hours start getting longer, uh, more daylight, um, and we can get some water on it, we give it a little bit of water and everything just kind of perks back to life. And um, we can start picking again this time of year or earlier if we wanted to or, or could. And also the benefits of it overwintering as well are, um, that the, uh, it gets a little sweeter. The, the, there's a lot more uh, sugar content in the spinach, and so it's, it's really delicious this time of year. Yeah, uh, let's pick some spinach, and I think it's also nice to highlight that what Regina and Nate are doing here is uh, a low input model to having fresh greens year round. This greenhouse isn't heated, um, but with a little planning ahead and using row cover, they have the option to have spinach or various cold hardy greens year round. Um, I think that's, that's a pretty amazing thing and necessary if we want to eat locally year round in this climate with such a short growing season. We have to, we have to understand and implement these practices that they're doing here. Oh man, it's like candy. It's like green spinach candy. It's such a hearty leaf too, like compared to what you buy in the grocery store. Like this thing is, is thick. And look at the, the characteristics, like the leaf has so much personality compared to what you find in the grocery store, which is just one shape, one size. Here you've got... Yeah, it's usually just the baby, baby leaves. Yeah, the baby leaves. All right, let's get cooking. Thanks to Nate and Regina's hard work, we have this lovely spinach here. Um, Jen, if you want to start, we are going to get a little bit of color on our cheese that has set um, and been cut. So we'll get some ghee in there. Maybe That's good. Maybe a little more, more than that, maybe three, four times that amount. Ooh, okay. Yeah, heavy, lots of butter. <laughs> I like it. Ooh. Yeah, that happens. Those plastic deli containers will break occasionally. Okay, is that good? Yeah, great. Okay. And we're gonna turn the heat up a little bit. Okay, so will this brown this up a little bit? 
It will. Make it crispy on the outside? Um, maybe, yeah, not so much crispy because we're going to reintroduce it back into a wet sauce. Um, what we're going to try to do is just sort of caramelize the sugars a little bit that are in the milk, okay. the lactose. So we'll just wait for this. Yeah, all right. It smells so good. And I'll start cutting some garlic when you put that in there. You which, want me to do it now? Yeah. Once we dump it in there, we're just going to not move it around too much. Okay. We'll do an even layer so we can move that over there. And then we're just going to let it sit for a second. And we're going to make a little, little paste here with the garlic. Is this your favorite knife? This is my favorite knife. I found it at a Goodwill by the pound. Are you familiar with these? No. They, <laughs> Goodwill has um, a headquarters in Maine where okay. they sell everything by the pound. Oh. So it's like a, a central distribution hub and things that don't sell uh, or don't end up going to stores end up in large, large bins. And I paid maybe 30 cents for this knife. Wow. And it's a $180 Japanese Misono. So it's a, it's a wonderful knife and I'm very lucky to have it. It's been good to me. And the fact that I found it for such cheap money is makes it even more special to me. Yeah, that's amazing. How's that cheese looking? You want to maybe give them a little turn? I even have yep. tongs here. Oh yeah. I was going to say tongs would be good. Ooh, thank you. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. So it might stick a little. Yeah, it'll but happen. I can just pretty easily grab it with the tongs. So do you wait until you get all four sides? No, I uh, maybe try to get one or two sides. Okay. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in there okay. momentarily. Mmm, smells delicious. Would you pass me that plate and we'll put the cheese on there and we'll start building the sauce. It smells really good. Okay. Okay, so the paneer is done. The paneer is done. We've pulled it out. We have a hot pan with uh, a fair amount of butter in there and we're going to start by Blooming those spices in there. Okay, tell me again what's in here. We have oh, cashmere chili, cumin, uh, some fenugreek leaves, bay leaves, uh, a little bit of mustard seed, um, cinnamon, clove, and I'll give you this to stir it around. Thank you. And the cashmere chili, that's not really spicy hot, right? Um, it's got a little bit of heat to it. It's not terribly spicy. It's not gonna... Um, be too disruptive to a palate, um, but it does, does definitely have a little bit of heat. They make hotter peppers, but the cashmere chili is used a lot um, just to give some nice color. All right, so now that those spices have toasted up, okay, we're gonna throw in onions. You can get those moving around. <laughs> to make a whiff. That's the cashmere chili right there. <laughs> it does have a little heat to it. <laughs> okay, so now, this is nice yeah. thick. Yeah, what we're trying to do is cook those onions down a little bit. So probably about two minutes or so on the onions. You can keep them moving. And then okay. you're also trying to like lift any, any scrapings off scrapings, the bottom. Scrapings, exactly. Got it. Back 
up. This is so fragrant. It's amazing. All right, so now <laughs> tomatoes are going in. That's called nervous chatter. Nervous chatter. <laughs> tomatoes are in. Working that. Turn the heat up again. So once the tomatoes cook a little bit, we're gonna throw in uh, green chili. Here we have jalapeno mm. and uh, that's ginger amazing. that's been pureed together. Yeah. Um, and that's gonna be spicy. Okay. Yep. <laughs> These tomatoes are diced so small. I love it. I'm usually kind of a hack when it comes to chopping tomatoes. Um, you can actually be a hack when you're cutting tomatoes for this dish. Um, we're cooking them down. Uh, you want them to be relatively small, uh -huh. but they don't have to be perfectly uniform. Um, they can be various shapes as long as the size is relatively similar so they cook at the same time. So this is pretty hot. Yeah. If you keep it moving, it won't burn. Yeah. Um, it's, and it's not sticking to the bottom. Nope. So it's actually going to be okay for our purposes right now as long. You wouldn't want to walk away from it uh, when it's on heat that high. If you're paying close attention to it and keeping things moving, it won't burn. Okay. All right, spinach time. All right. You have to show this color. Show them the color. It's amazing. Uh, this is uh, spinach that's been blanched and then pureed, so it's super smooth. Uh, and that's going to give us a really nice texture uh, in the final dish. And by the way, this show was made possible by our very generous sponsors. Meredith Village Savings Bank, EVP Marketing and Media, Patrick Miller and Pamela Andruskevich, Nourish Proper Food, Inspire Cafe, Wild Heart Yoga and Wellness, and Lakes Region Mental Health, as well as Local Foods Plymouth. Now we're going to throw a little water in there to loosen it up. Okay. You're doing great, Jen. Thank you. Also gonna need a little oh, soap. it's so beautiful. Was that kosher? Yes. Kosher salt? Kosher salt. Okay, this looks fantastic. Perfect Sunday meal. This is tiring my hands more than milking that cow. <laughs> Pass the test. Yeah, it's going to be Chef fine. test. A little bit more of that. And then uh, we have some garam masala. Do I have spinach on my face? <laughs> no. We have uh, garam masala here. We're just going to throw maybe a teaspoonish or so in there. So what's in garam masala? Garam masala is uh, coriander. Oh, look, well, I'll read it to you. In this one I made, it's got cardamom, coriander, cumin, peppercorn, clove, fennel, cinnamon, uh, star anise, and nutmeg. Now before it splatters too much, we're going to turn the heat down and stir in a little, stir in a little cream, reintroduce the cheese, and that'll be our dish. All right, throw in a little heavy cream here. Ooh. That came from the cow. We're going to put the cheese back in. You want to give me a little scrape there? Yep. Excellent. And just for texture, I like to throw in a little uh, fresh spinach as well that hasn't been pureed. And just kind of stir that in there. And then we'll let that come back up. Turn the heat off, taste it, see if we need to make any adjustments. And then that'll be it for sog paneer. We made sog paneer. Sog and paneer. 
Now we are on to this delicious salad. Yeah, we're gonna make a, a sprout salad that uh, I learned about when I was traveling and it's sort of counterintuitive to traditional salad making that we have here. Uh, you're gonna heat butter up with spices and pour it over the salad as like a dressing at the end, mm. so which I, I found what very interesting. What can go wrong with that? Right, <laughs> um, our first move will be peeling the beet, if okay. you would like to do that. Sure. I should have worn my apron. I get all these dirty jobs. Um, okay, so the beets and the carrots came from Longview? Longview, yep. Excellent. Our friends over at Longview. These uh, carrots um, have been washed. I don't feel it's necessary to peel them for this dish, so we're just gonna go ahead and grate these right into the bowl. Great. Would you like to get about two tablespoons of the ghee into sure. that pan? We'll get that heating up. And then the gas will also need to be turned on. Mm. Challenging me. <laughs> You're getting promoted. <laughs> Excellent. I love cooking. All right, so I have to push this down. Yep. And then all the way, there's a pilot that will want a little bit more, a little bit more. There it is. Well done. But now what? It's kind of a big flame. Yeah, you turn it back. Oh, there got it. it. Is. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like to peel the daikon next? Yes. Okay, so if someone was going to the grocery store, because yes. we can't get this at Longview right now, nope. what would this look like that would look in the like produce bin? That would look almost exactly as it does right now in your hand, except okay. for it would be larger. They can get quite large. Um, this is just a Japanese radish or daikon. And what's the flavor? Is it kind of mild or? It is a little more, a little more mild. Not, it doesn't have a sort of spicy characteristic like you find in other radishes. Um, it's just got lovely juiciness and crunch. And now it's pink. <laughs> and now it's pink. It's all right. It's going to be even more pink once it goes into this bowl. All right. So the ghee is hot. We will yep. throw in the spices. You have uh, hing, cumin seed, and cashmere chili in there. Okay. And we're gonna toast those. What's hing again? It's hing is uh, a root that grows in India, and it's got uh, sort of a onion-like flavor to it, um, but a little more astringent. Um, it's not. I'm not making it sound too appealing right now. It's uh, it's got a very unique flavor profile. It has a unique smell as well. Yeah, a unique smell. Ooh, but it smells amazing in the pan. How long do we let this go? Um, I'd say you can turn the heat off on that right now. Okay. I just threw some How mung beans in here, sprouted mung beans. Uh, just very release? Easy to make. Yep. Uh, sprouted mung beans, just soak overnight in water, strain, and then every 12 hours or so, uh, pour some clean water over them, strain it again, and make sure that your container is tipped over a little bit so any residual water can strain off. What I do is I cover it with cheesecloth and I'll turn it upside down. Okay. And then uh, over the course of a couple days, you'll start to have uh, these sprouts started. And that just makes a lot of the nutrients uh, more available for our bodies uh, to absorb. Now, for people cooking with us tonight, um, can you purchase sprouted mung beans? Yeah, you should be able to find them at Market Basket or Hannaford's or any grocery store in the area. Um, they're usually sort of next to the tofu, I think. Uh, but if you wanted to make these a few days ahead, these are good for a week. And if you put them in the fridge, you'll get even longer shelf life out of them. And okay. they just continue to grow and get larger. All right, Jen. So. When you want to squeeze one of those lemons into that bowl? Yes. Let's squeeze one of the lemons. And there might be some seeds in there. Is that being scolded by the chef? <laughs> no, that wasn't a scold. Okay. <laughs> that was just a warning. Oops. And we're cutting a little cilantro. That'll go in here as well. Very good. 
And then a couple tablespoons of olive oil, maybe three tablespoons. And last, the spices. Right for scooping out. Just yeah, and throw it in there and then we're gonna mix it all up. Nice. Very good. And you can you go ahead and use that spatula to toss it all together. So pretty. I love this, especially in winter because it's great color and it's really fresh tasting. Because I've had it. <laughs> Lucky me. Okay. Would you uh, like to ladle yes. some? Spinach into this bowl for me, some yes. sauce. Oops, it's a big ladle. Great. A little more? No, oh, that's good. Okay. You know what we'll do though is we'll pull out one piece of cheese. And let it sort of sit on top so we get a little col color contrast. There we go. Should we clean the sides too? Yeah, let's clean the sides. And then I have a few sprouts kicking around here. And I'm crawling up the side of the dish. Oh, fancy. All right. Pretty. So here we have sog paneer with homemade cheese from Sea to It Farm, uh, kale sprouts from D Acres. Uh, a root vegetable salad um, with vegetables from Longview, um, and then a potato stuffed parata. Wow, that looks delicious, Dunstan. Thank you so much. This has been really fun in the kitchen. You're welcome. <laughs>